Welcome to Worship with Ascension Lutheran Church in beautiful Nelson, B.C. Today is June 25th and the fourth Sunday after Pentecost. Today is also Pride Sunday at Ascension. Ascension Lutheran Church has been a Reconciling in Christ congregation since 2008. What that means is we have intentionally recognized our need to welcome all of God's children, whether they are LGBTQ+, whether they are people of color, people who are different because of other reasons in their lives. We have an intentional welcome statement that I'm going to read to you now. We welcome all who are seeking God's love and grace. We welcome all because God welcomes all, regardless of race or culture, sexual orientation, gender identity, or relationship status. Our unity is in Christ. So today, our service, we will celebrate our LGBTQ plus siblings. And we also acknowledge that the struggle for justice, rights, and equity for all is an ongoing struggle. And we as allies need to participate in this. We are called to stand up and support others who are oppressed or whose rights are being taken away or reduced. Our service today We'll also have hymns, special music, lessons, prayers, and a sermon. Some of us will worship through this video and others will worship in our church building. But no matter where we are, we are together in this in spirit. And we're really glad that you are here. Church a safer space, 
we trust in the Spirit's guidance. As we seek to be an advocate for our LGBTQIA2S plus siblings and all marginalized people who are told that they are other, we trust in the Spirit's guidance. As we seek to learn more about the intersectionality of ministry, we trust in the Spirit's guidance. It is with the guidance of the Holy Spirit and grace of Jesus we confess and ask forgiveness. We proclaim with joy and love that people of all sexual orientations, gender identities, and gender expressions matter, that Black, Indigenous, and people of color matter, that neurodiversity and differing abilities of bodies are sacred, and that we as a church stand firmly against racism, homophobia, transphobia, and any other sin that makes people feel less than others because of who God lovingly made them to be. We commit our words and action to be ones of advocacy for all people in your kingdom. Holy Creator, we celebrate your boundless diversity and see the ways that we are made in your image. Amen. Our first reading. Did a stranger ever surprise you with a big smile? Or what is it like to feel estranged, to live as a person unbeloved? If someone queer gave you hope, could it be a new kinship? Like in the book of Ruth, chapter 1, verses 6 to 18. Then Naomi started to return with her daughters-in-law from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the country of Moab that the Lord had had consideration for his people and given them food. So she set out from the place where she had been living, she and her two daughters-in-law, and they went on their way to go back to the land of Judah. But Naomi said to her daughters-in-law, go back each of you to your mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant you may find security, each of you in the house of your husband. Then she kissed them, and they wept aloud. They said to her, No, we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, Turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Do I still have sons in my womb, that they may become your husbands? Turn back, my daughters. Go you your way, for I am too old to have a husband. Even though, if there was hope for me, even if I should have a husband tonight and bear sons, would you wait until they were grown? Would you then refrain from marrying? No, my daughters, it has been far more bitter for me than for you because the hand of the Lord has turned against me. Then they wept aloud. Again, Oprah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. So she said, See, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, do not press me to leave you or turn back from following you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. There I will be buried. 
May the Lord do thus, so to me, and more as well, if even death parts me from you. When Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her, she said no more. Holy wisdom, holy word, thanks be to God.
From childhood, we get ideas about life that are like the law, the truth. But those ideas may have mistaken ends too. As church people, we need continual renewal. As St. Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12 to 26. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free. And we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but many. If the foot were to say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear were to say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members of the body, each one of them, as he chose. If all were a single member, where would, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And those members of the body that we think less honorable, we clothe with greater honor. And our less respectable members are treated with greater respect, whereas our more respectable, respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior member, that there may be no dissension within the body. But the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. May the church hear what the Spirit is saying. Amen. came near and heard them disputing with one another. And seeing that he answered them well, he asked him, which commandment is first of all? Jesus answered, the first is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Then the scribe said to him, You are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one, and beside him there is no other, and to love him with all the heart, and with all the understanding, and with all the strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself. This is much more important than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. 
When Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. After that, no one dared ask him any question. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord. Amen. Good morning, everybody, and happy Pride Month. Thank you all for being here and listening today. Just a note about terminology, I'm going to be using the word queer in this sermon, which is a reclaimed form of slur for many LGBTQ plus folks. This is a personal choice because I find it to be a good umbrella term for the community, but I always ask what, pe what people are comfortable using. I don't know how to begin this except for acknowledging just how difficult it's been for the LGBTQ plus community over the past couple of years. We've continued to see anti-LGBTQ plus legislation be proposed and put on the books. But even more concerning, there is an increasingly vocal group of people who are willing to threaten LGBTQ plus people with violence just for existing. The hatred feels overwhelming on some days, and it's not always easy to find hope. But there is something that does give me hope this Pride Month and always. And that's community. This nebulous concept which can carry so many different ideas of inclusion and exclusion, unity and division. It's a big concept, but I've tried to break it down with the three readings we've heard today. The reading from Ruth emphasizes how community forms out of love and dev devotion. Love that causes Ruth to follow her mother-in-law into a new land with new customs, joining Naomi's community. There is very much a difference between these two women. The Moabites have different gods and customs than the Hebrews. But that doesn't matter to Ruth. Instead, through her words, we have an enduring example of how the bonds of love can transcend lines of difference. We don't need to be the same as people to devote ourselves to their well-being. And we don't need to be the same kind of people when forging community. The reading from Corinthians gives us an idea of how community functions. Just as there is no way for the eye to say to the hand, I have no need of you, there is no cutting off community. We are all of us diverse members of it. Nobody is dispensable. We can't draw convenient lines through our communities, excluding those we dislike to keep the ones that we do. The Corinthians reading also emphasizes that being part of a community means giving different help and support to various members. Those members of the body that we think less honorable, we clothe with greater honor, and our less respectable members are treated with greater respect, whereas our more respectable members do not need this. This is so that the members may have the same care for one another. We see this idea reflected in the difference between the concept of equality, treating everybody the same regardless of background or identity, and equity, providing people different resources and supports as needed so they may better navigate society. Finally, we have the reading from Mark, talking about the first commandment, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than this. If you take one thing away from the Bible, from Jesus' teachings, let it be this. Loving your neighbor as yourself is explored in several places in the Bible. We get an enduring example of what it means in the parable of the Good Samaritan, when Jesus responds to the question, who is my neighbor? The ideas of neighbors and community are intrinsically linked. We can think of our local communities as composed of our physical neighbors people living in the same geographic area as us. But just as the Samaritan and the man he helped were not neighbors by proximity, or even members of the same cultural community, we can't base either concept of neighbors or community just on the people who live close to us. So where does our community extend to? Beyond Ascension? Beyond Nelson? The Kootenays? The province of BC? Canada? North America? The whole world? Because there are no limits mentioned in the Bible about who our neighbors can be, we have to assume it's everybody. 
which means being aware of who gets excluded from traditional ideas of community. This includes being not just aware of LGBTQ plus discrimination, but also the exclusion of people who are unhoused, who are using substances, who are dealing with mental illness, and who are discriminated against because of race, ethnicity, or ability. So now that we've explored these biblical ideas about community, why is this important for Pride Month and LGBTQ plus people? Because Pride is not just about celebrating people who are living life authentically, though that is important. Pride is publicity. It's a message broadcast through rainbows and glitter to everybody in the closet saying that you're beautiful and that you deserve to have a community where you don't have to live in shame. One Facebook quote that I've seen making the rounds over the past couple of weeks stuck in my mind. Pride is important because someone out there believes that they're better off dead than being themselves. Queer youth who face bullying and feel isolated from support have a high risk of suicide. But it's not just the younger generation that needs community. LGBTQ plus adults can face employment discrimination or lack of proper treatment in the medical field, which can result in shorter lifespans. And how many queer elders would be alive today, guiding our communities, if not for the devastation of the AIDS pandemic that went ignored and unaddressed by governments and society for far too long? But it's not all bad news. The thing about humans is that we're resilient, and we create resilient communities. One example that comes to mind is Have a Gay Day, a Facebook page that I've been following for many years. They were founded in 2012 in memory and honor of Jamie Rodemeyer, a 14-year-old who took his life in 2011 after severe bullying and harassment. Have a Gay Day has since ballooned into one of the most important LGBTQ plus nonprofits operating today. As a good example of the type of community work that transcends differences of identity, in addition to their LGBTQ plus campaigns and activism, the group also operates a lending library, a community meeting room, a small theater, and a pantry that provides free food, pet food, and personal hygiene items. To quote organizer Michael Note, a lot of people think that the LGBTQ community only helps the LGBTQ community, and for us, to help everyone means everything. Another example that brings me hope is a little closer to home. Earlier this year, we saw backlash against a drag story time event originally hosted by the library. And while it was discouraging to, the see, to see the same ignorance that's canceled LGBTQ plus events in other places, what I want to focus on is what came after the extraordinary and loving response by hundreds of our community, and later the peaceful rescheduling of the drag storytime event hosted by the Nelson United Church. Community means taking care of one another. If one member suffers, we all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. So if anybody wants to know how to include LGBTQ plus people in our communities, no worries, we're already here and included. There is no drawing lines in the community. There is no cutting people out. How do we support LGBTQ plus people and all people in our communities? How do we love our LGBTQ plus neighbors? Small actions make a world of difference. Being a smiling face in the crowd as the pride parade passes, being a warm body at events like Drake Storytime outside City Hall, showing through your presence that you care and that this matters to you, hanging a rainbow in your window or sticking a supportive sticker somewhere visible, letting queer people know that they are seen in these spaces. In wider society, this can mean the equity idea I mentioned earlier, providing employment opportunities destined for sexual orientation and gender identity minorities, and ensuring that there are queer-friendly resources available in schools, workplaces, and beyond. It's also really important to be informed. 
Some of the justifications you may hear for canceling LGBTQ plus events include the idea of parents' rights, as if LGBTQ plus people are not also parents, or the idea of protecting children, as if there aren't also LGBTQ plus children, teens, and youth who need to know that they are supported by our community, who need to know that they're not alone. It's also always important to speak up when somebody is speaking out of ignorance or hatred. Not always to change their opinion, but to let other people in the space know there's somebody on their side, that there's an ally present, that they're supported by a community member. The letters our council sent in support of the Drake Storytime event received a lot of positive response from those who needed to know that others in the wider community cared. It seems like a small thing, and yet, it's huge. It's a difficult time right now. There's no getting around it. It's probably going to continue to be difficult through the years ahead. But the LGBTQ plus community isn't going anywhere. And the enduring lessons of the Bible teaching us how to be loving and supportive members of a wider community, stretching across differences of identity, well, they're not going anywhere either. As Christians, as allies, as neighbours, it's essential for us to strengthen our communities in a way that is not limited or exclusionary. May we continue to be a true community of Christians in every sense of the word, doing justice, loving kindness, and walking humbly with God. So go out and love your neighbours, all of them, wherever they are. May it be so. Amen. Traditionally, the Apostles' Creed, or sometimes the Nicene Creed, are used as a statement of our faith during worship. Today, we use an alternate creed to remind us of what we are called to live as followers of Jesus Christ and how the divine works in our lives. I invite you to join me in this statement of faith. I believe it is a matter of faith to stand up for those who cannot stand up for themselves. I believe it is a matter of faith to recognize equally and love all members of God's human family, whatever their race, creed, color, gender, marital status, physical or mental capacity. I believe God's creation is good, beautiful, sacred, and therefore to condemn any portion of God's creation is to condemn a portion of God. This is sin. I believe Jesus Christ came to us to free all people from sin and to make disciples, people willing to live Christ's discipline of love and justice for all. I believe the Holy Spirit is that power within us that gives us courage and stamina to face the truth and to live it, even to die for it as Jesus died. I believe in the resurrection, the victory over death, the truth that is life for all in Jesus' name. Glory be to God, one in three, creation, savior, and holy power of love. Amen. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. With these words, merciful God, you are invited to respond, send wholeness to all. We pray for our pastors, deacons, bishops, and church leaders that they may lead us to, a, to be a loving and welcoming community in Jesus Christ. We give thanks for reconciling works and all our reconciling in Christ partners. We pray for our sister churches, Good Shepherd Lutheran in Coquitlam and Reverend Eric Crucial. Trinity Lutheran in Delta and Reverend Jennifer Wilson and our Ascension Lutheran Church and Pastor Brenda and retired Pastor Nolan. We pray that the whole church may someday be a refuge for all our LGBTQIA plus siblings. Merciful God, send wholeness to all. 
We pray for change, for the dismantling of systems rooted in oppression and discrimination. Make us bold in our proclamation that the lives, loves, and gifts of lesbian, gay, bisexual, bisexual transgender, queer, intersex, asexual, aromantic, black, brown, indigenous, incarcerated, disabled, and migrant people matter to you, and so they matter to all of us manifest in both word and deed. Teach us to see and celebrate the stunning beauty in all you have made. Merciful God, send wholeness to all. We pray for the sustainability of our earthly home. Guide us to care for creation, be mindful of waste, carbon emissions, and the impact of these sins on poor and marginalized communities. We pray that governments enact laws that protect and defend the poor, marginalized, and persecuted. We pray that your hand of justice intercedes for us. Merciful God, send wholeness to all. We pray for those who have chaos swirling with them. We pray for those that have been told they are less than, wrong, or an outcast for who they are. We pray that all of us find our true peace and wholeness of ourselves in you. We pray for those that are victims of violence at the hands of homophobia, transphobia, racism, and ableism. We pray for your mercy, love, and healing care for them. Merciful God, send wholeness to all. Be with us as we live our mission as a community of Christians empowered by the grace of God through word and sacrament to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with God. Receive our prayers for our children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Amen. Please join me in the prayer that Jesus taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May God, our creator, redeemer, and sustainer, who calls across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest seed, bless, keep, and sustain you, now and to the end of the age. Amen. Go in peace. Love your neighbor. Thanks be to God. <laughs>